Live from Dunamis Church, this is Today at Dunamis Sunday Night Special. We have a great show for you tonight with some amazing guests joining us. I'm your co-host Ed, and now let's welcome the host of the show, Sean Hudson. Here we are today to talk life at Dunamis. Hey, hey, welcome, welcome, welcome to the Today at Dunamis. It's not Wednesday, it's Sunday. Hey, Sean. So is it today at Dunamis or tonight at Dunamis? It's it's a, uh, a good 6 p.m. at Dunamis. Good 6 p.m. <laughs> a, good, a good 6 p.m. A good 6 p.m. <laughs> at Dunamis. And uh, let me just sh- sh- um, share while we are changing seats for our special guests. Uh, let me just share that this is a special edition because of the restrictions that we're facing right now. Uh, so this morning at 9 a.m. we shared a pre-recorded uh, program. And tonight we have pre-recorded this program as well and uh, on the spur of the moment but what I love so much about this team is that they just respond so quickly and so effectively just at the drop of a hat so Pastor Danny and I were on our ways at 6 30 in the morning and been to the Brisbane markets collecting uh, all of the produce and uh, we had left there it's about quarter to eight and we're on our way to get all of the eggs and I got a message that our premier which Americans would call the governor had just brought out the law that as of 6 p.m on Friday through to 6 p.m on Monday the greater Brisbane area which included Ipswich and Logan uh, was totally closed down but what I also heard of too is that if anybody in the Gold Coast like Pastor Harry had even been in the area like Logan they would also have to go and close down for three days so that was a uh, quite an event but we did our program and we're back here again and you know what God is in control and I have a, a couple of great guests with us and uh, the first guest is very dear to me and uh, means a lot my son Josiah who also happens to be our CEO chief executive officer here of the church so Josiah welcome awesome good to be here awesome it's nice to have you thank you for dressing up for me yes <laughs> <laughs> well, well, we were packing down the Christmas tree and uh, that was the plan for today and dealing with all this other stuff so um we still packed down the Christmas tree and and everything else Christmassy so um yeah you've been out working now Josiah um I've known you all your life but uh what's so exciting is that it was this year, oh no, sorry, last year, just gone, I'm in a new year, this this last year when you came on as the Senior Associate CEO uh, of the Dunamis Church. And uh, I must say that you have been absolutely incredible. I'm not saying it through nepotism, meaning that you're related to me, but I am saying that you have been outstanding. But it's remarkable because for your first year, it started off basically with the COVID yeah. How have you found all that stress, pressure, et cetera? Uh, I think you adapt like anything in life. I think um, if we all wait for clear waters, we would never sail. And uh, it's all about perseverance. I think even in the Christian life, it's it's all about the storms of life. I think for any Christian, anyone can be a great Christian through a good time, but uh, give someone a rough time, a hard time, and you'll see the true character. So um, I can't take all the credit. I think our staff, our team have been tremendous. Um, everyone's been on the same page. Um, everyone's working towards unity. And I think if you don't fight for unity, you tolerate division. So I think that's one thing that's really stuck with us this year is let's fight for unity. Let's work together. Um, let's do what we can to not offend, but support, uplift, encourage. Um, and I think that that should be our, our motto to even this year and, and what we're going through. Let's support each other. Um, I was just on Facebook just, just quickly, just before, and um, the amount of outroar from people People, Christians, just just saying, chill out. With, with even all the shopping centers, everyone's panicking, um, everyone's stressing out, overbuying. Uh, people are shopping with two, three trolleys full of food, yet not realizing it's not helping the greater region of our city. That you know, by people overbuying, it's not helping each other out. So I think that's a great thing to do: is let's support each other, um, be like-minded. We're all in this together, which is so important. Yeah, I mean, that's a really interesting point. Is it's only a three-day lockdown. It's yeah, not and, a free uh, the week. shops are still open, so it's not like the shops are closed. The the, the grocery stores are still open because it's a necessity. So, but people are panic buying and causing more chaos for other people at the same time. 
Have you heard what people are buying or what are they running out of? Uh, meat is pretty much all gone. Um, <laughs> so my wife went to the shops um, and a lot of the meat is pretty much all gone. Um, toilet paper is starting to eradicate. I don't know if everyone had Mexican right before this or or, or, or not, but toilet paper seems to be going. And, and just everyone's being a bit silly. Um, I think if we're more cautious, it helps everyone out. We're all on the same page. We're all doing it together. Um, well, to, tonight uh, I'd planned to <laughs> cook a pork belly. So, uh, and I had to go and get it today, right? So when I got the news, I was with Pastor Danny driving back at quarter to eight, seven thirty, saying, "Uh oh, there's going to be this new laws." I quickly rang up Sandra. I wasn't driving; Danny was driving, and I said, "Quickly, get to Woolies and get my pork belly and have a meat because it's going to be a big rush." And uh, I'd gotten home about nine o'clock. Oh, I don't know, eight thirty. Uh, to get changed through the programs. And she must have left so fast that the parrot wasn't even <laughs> in the cage. The door for the dog was yeah. open. No alarm was on. The house was like a rapture had happened. That'll help some people out. A rapture had happened. It was all gone. But what happened, she rang me up. Your mum rang me up. And she said, I'm so glad you said. I got down here and there's nobody. But in the time I went to get the meat, I got the checkout. And you can't move now. It's packed out. Yeah. So uh, it's crazy. Yeah, well, some places are out the door for even lining up to even get inside. I know the local shopping centers us, they have police there. Um, just because people are panic buying, stressing. Um, I think a lot of this just creates people panic, which it isn't a panic. It's, it's a precaution. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I heard, uh, I think uh, Darren was telling me, Darren Watts, was that the police were at the Hyperdome stopping people going yeah, in because right. they can't fit any more people in. Yeah. And I saw on the Courier Mail at Fairfield at their Coles, it was a two-hour wait to get wow. to the checkout. So how, how do you think, how do you feel about all of this COVID stuff? Like, like, I mean, I've never seen people like this. No, not at all. So you wouldn't have. So what's your take? You're 29 years old. Uh, you're a father of two children. How do you take it or how do your peers take it? Um, I think COVID for majority of us, even for us, it um, reprioritizes your values on what really does matter. Um, I think we were always uh, get, 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 or try to obtain something new, exciting, yet what really valued most is what was in your home already. Um, so for us, or even in our home, it prioritized family time. Um, it prioritized just the simple things in life. Um, obviously there is still a lot of truth to COVID and everything that's happening. Um, I do hear both sides of the story and they both have good points. Um, so I'm not one sided to the other. Um, but I think a lot of it is precautionary. Um, I think as a state in Queensland and Australia, I think we, we've done some pretty good um, things to help protect us as Queenslanders, although there is bittersweet in what has been done. Um, I think at the same time, we're, we're a safe state uh, compared to other countries. I think of uh, Europe even right now, England, with I think they had just this week, they had 50,000 something cases in one day wow. um, going to lockdown. And, and just imagining, although we're not, nowhere near as big as Europe or England, um, to think where we are, we're blessed. We're blessed as a nation um, that we have the financial support or, or even just anything beyond that. As a nation, we are so blessed um, to be where we are today. And I think for us to be in COVID, be thankful for what we do have. Um, you know, be thankful for your loved ones. Some people have lost loved ones this year. Be thankful and appreciate them. I think life is so short to be bitter. Life is too short uh, to go without Christ. And, and, and even if you didn't, or walking with Christ, or didn't even have a relationship with Christ, um, how worthless it would be. I mean, what would you place your hope in in, in the midst of a pandemic? Now, there are people, Josiah, who are listening to us right now, and they don't even believe there is such a thing as COVID. They believe it's a government makeup thing, or some even believe that it was just something done to get rid of Trump as the president in yep. America. Um, do you hear of this sort of stuff in your peers or groups? Yeah, yeah there, there is always, I think there's always two sides to every story. Um, I hear both sides. Um, I think a, a good leader isn't one who picks a side, but a, a good leader is one who hears from both sides and, and shows support. I think everyone has good reasons to believe what they believe, um, 100%. Um, there is truth to believe that maybe this COVID thing is a hoax, but then there's a lot of truth behind it where people are getting hurt or, or there is precautionary measures. And I think for us to be on the other side of the world where we are, we would quite never know what they're going through overseas. Um, but there are definitely two sides to every story. Um, there is a lot of truth to every story as well. But I think we have to have the right discernment, be wise, um, 
and really be really be wise with everything we do, how we say. I think at the end of the day, in the midst of what we go through, what's most important is your witness. And I think we can so easily lose our witness by something so minor or tedious. And and I think in the midst of the world we live in, our greatest witness or our greatest example of Christians meeting Christ is you. Yeah. And um, I think in the midst of your diversity and indifference, indifference has always been there. Um, COVID is just one never speed bump in the road. And there's always something that will always uh, prohibit us or, or stop us or challenge us. But I think in the midst of what you go through, what is your witness? Um, you know, there are always going to be two sides of people. There's always going to be a different belief. Uh, it was only, I think, uh, the last two years, it was all about LGBT and, and everything like that. And that caused a massive division. And here we are with COVID and people believe this is fake or this is real. And, and then even everything else that this could entail or will entail. And, and and in the midst of diversity, I think, how is our witness lining up to our life and being an example of Christ? Mm. Now, look, I, I think that here in Australia, in particular Queensland, we have been so protected from this. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, even more so New Zealand. But we're so protected that it's easy to say, well, where is it? Yeah. You know, yeah. What's happening? And because we're not seeing people die around us or yeah. we're not seeing people family around us in the area i think the last time we only had six deaths in the whole of queensland our state i think the last time was around like may the 14th so we've been well insulated and protected uh compared to you know victoria uh, which saw 800 something deaths and and new south wales over 50 something deaths so we've been pretty protected so you know i'm making an excuse that perhaps there's people that just because we have been so insular protected that they just think it's not real. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that can also play a thing. For, for me, you know, you're very gracious. That's what I like about you. You're very gracious and caring. I, I personally find people who don't believe it's real irritating. I find that people always have to prove their point to you. Um, I think we can disagree to agree and move on, but yep. we don't have to really slam it down their throats just because you and I might have a different d- d- belief doesn't mean I support them or I don't support you. But I think um, it's a point to where we come back to the same point is your witness. It, what, what point is it trying to prove someone wrong just for the sake of a law? Yeah, I, I agree. And uh, I, I think that we need it in, 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 with grace in that area is that it's like vaccination. Yeah. Uh, there are those who are totally anti the vaccination and – I understand in regards to the vaccination that is coming from the United Kingdom, Oxford yep. University, because they have used uh, aborted fetuses uh, in that area. Um, but I don't know if they realize that even for vaccinations like rubella, uh, hepatitis A, B, yep. also has been used with, from cells of yep. aborted fetuses. And it's a, it's a difficult thing. Uh, and, you know... Uh, I understand, but some people are just totally vaccination against it altogether. Mm. And, and you know, I just know, even though they say it's up to you, that there will be restrictions put on us if yeah. you don't. For example, uh, my, your grandma on your mum's side, uh, she's 95. And the only way that your mum and I could visit her was that not only did we have to get a flu shot, but we had to bring a certificate from the doctor yeah. to let us visit. Otherwise, it wouldn't let us visit. So I'm thinking, so what's going to happen? Are they going to bring in the thing that, have you been vaccinated for mm. this coronavirus? Yep. And if we don't, we can't visit. So, you know, I've got to be frank with you, despite what others might feel. If it comes to that point in her age, I would get vaccinated because yep. it's important for me yep. and her life stage. Now, I wouldn't just go out of my way and get it for the yep. sake of it, but I would get it if there are requirements. I yeah. think travel is going to be putting on as well. I think yeah. there's going to be restrictions to the countries and different areas. I think you've got to go according to your conviction. I think I wouldn't judge somebody because they're vaccinated or not. I think um, the world has enough judgment, so why give more? But um, I think a lot of people who will be vaccinated, they have a reason to do it. I was speaking to someone even on the weekend, um, and they have family overseas in America, and they, they said that there was no way that they would vaccinate um, which mean in, in time comes when time comes um, in the future, uh, they are going to have you can't travel or international flights without vaccination. Uh, this particular person said there is no way he would vaccinate um, to go see his family. So he's even weighing up the, the cost of just going there right now and living there permanently with family or, or whatever it may be, you know. Um, but I think there's there's really strong points on both sides, I think. Mm. There are reasons. I think I don't think anyone wants to be vaccinated just for the heck of it, just because we love a jab in the arm. But those who do get vaccinated, there probably are bigger reasons to even like what you're saying. Just you know, um, at the end of the day, 
family is important and, and we shouldn't be there saying, hey, you're vaccinated, I don't want to talk to you. Um, There's yeah. a, a good book I read this just last week uh, and it's called Why Science and Faith Need Each Other. It's a Christian book. Why Science and Faith Need Each Other. And uh, it's a good book at this time. Uh, I read it uh, because it's talking about well, he calls it eight shared values that moves us beyond fear. And it's basically a Christian author, Elaine Howard Eklund. And uh, the book is talking about how do I balance with science and yeah. my faith. That's good. Uh, that it's not all about science and it's not all about faith. But God can move. And the whole thing in the book is that God can move a miracle yeah. through science and that we have to believe that there are Christians who are involved in science mm. who can get an anointing yeah. or get a truth from God. Like penicillin was invaded by a Christian. Yeah. And where would we be today without penicillin? So true. And so there has to be the area where we can see it. So just reading that book, and I recommend it, is to just get the perspective of balance. Yeah. So uh, I don't, in, in history, Josiah, during the American Revolution, uh, in France, there is a revolution going on there, and it's called Enlightenment, yep. which basically was science overrides faith. And what happened to the American Revolution of its leaders was they were in tune towards science and not holding in faith. In fact, the third president of the United States, Thomas Jefferson, uh, he cut out of his Bible every reference towards a miracle. He just left the teachings of Jesus. That that particular Bible of his is the Smithsonian. A museum in America, yeah. which is an extreme. But I believe that you can have faith absolutely, and still have tools of science, not yeah. being totally on it. Yeah. And uh, so it's just a, if you're interested in broadening your horizon, it's a good book. You can get it at Kurong, Why Science and Faith Need Each Other, which I think is a helpful area. So just the basic areas. You can, you can definitely see in this time we're in that there is a need for Christians to rise up. Yeah. Um, I've been very glued to um, the media happening even in America right now with, you know, you can really see that there is... Um, uh, a rising up of people wanting to make their voice known, and and you can really see that that there is a revolution coming for for people who want to make their points known. And, and I think more than ever before, um, we need Christians to rise up. Not that we would want to or strive to be always right, but we would be uh, righteousness and, and a witness in that situation. I think so many people want to be right, yeah. But I think uh, Christianity and being a witness for God wasn't always about being right. It was showing love for God yeah. so loved the world that He gave. And uh, I think more than ever before in this time we're in, in the season we're in, and, and even what we're about to go into in the year 2021, that we don't know what, what this year holds. But I do believe in, in what this year holds is not for us to be right, but to love. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think in the midst of that, our witness is far more important than me saying to someone, hey, you're wrong, I'm right, I win. And uh, that never got anyone anywhere. That never revealed Christ anywhere. It was love. Yeah, no, that's, that's a very good word, a true word, good word in season. And, you know, there are people out there, Josiah, right now, uh, even though um, it's Sunday, they've only got till Monday, we yeah. hope, who knows? I mean, something might be broadcast from this time, changing it, who knows? But the fact of the matter is, is that just be careful of fear because fear yeah. wants to steal from you uh, God's peace. And uh, I shared the other day from Deuteronomy 31.6, it says, Be strong, courageous, and firm. Fear not, nor wow. be in terror before God, for it is the Lord your God who goes with you. He will not fail you or forsake you, in the Amplified mm. Translation. And, and if we could only spend equal amount of time in the Word of God as we do to the conspiracy theories yeah. and all these other programs, uh, just because it's on the media doesn't mean it's true. And I'm, I'm talking about our main news yeah. as well as these other Googled news mm. Just spend time in the Word of God. Keep it balanced because that's what's going to get you through this. I mean, if we if we calculated our day in which in which we watch speculation and news and theories, what if we match that with worship or being in the presence of God, reading your Bible, sitting into worship? I mean, uh, it would be amazed how much we spend on social media. What if we were to replicate that and give God time? I think you have twenty four hours in a day. Yeah. How much time do you give into just devotion time with God and? And we wonder why we have so much fear, but when you think about it, how many hours did you spend in your day researching, watching videos, and you tally that up against, what, 10 minutes in the Word? Yes. Or if that. Yes. So, of course, fear is going to be more prevalent because it's stronger in your day than you are in the Word of God. 
Yes, yes, that's true. Now, uh, you're preaching the word next Sunday, the 17th. Yeah. Uh, you're speaking in the morning at the 8 a.m. chapel service and also at the 9.30 a.m. morning service, which will be live streaming. And then in the evening, uh, I will be sharing the word of God. But uh, Josiah, what, do you know your message title for next week? No, I actually didn't know I was speaking next week, but I, I will. <laughs> <laughs> I actually have the 24th and the 31st, but I can, I can speak the 17th. Oh, okay. Well, I must be down then. Yeah, I think you're, I, I, I'm on... The, the 24th at 6 p.m. Okay. and then the 31st at 9.30. No, your mother's on the 24th. Yeah, yeah, I'm on at night. Okay, very good. Then she's there on in go. the morning because I, I was meant to be the third in the morning, but that was ah. moved for Denise. But, um, oh, because we change it for but Denise. It's up to you. I don't mind. No, this. you're right. So the 17th, the 17th, <laughs> uh, I'm speaking. And part two, which is the battle for your heart, a simmering volcano. And uh, simmering at that night, I'm doing is too it's got the one who knows all but hey praise god i got you here you helped the old man out with the memory so all right so i'm speaking next sunday <laughs> so uh what are you speaking about oh i'm speaking about the heart the conditions there you go so which is good and also we'll have shane back next yeah week. yeah yeah shane will this be back, back, we're back at church yeah all right any closing thoughts um be wise be wise um uh, uh, there is obviously a lot of people are unaware, even like I said to my wife, practically joking, but not really joking. I said, hey, let's let's just go away to the Gold Coast for three nights before 6 p.m. so we can get away and have freedom. But um, if you are thinking of traveling, uh, please don't do it. I, I heard through some friends and someone was meant to go up north uh, for four nights and they got rejected because the hotel is stopping anyone from greater Brisbane. Oh. So the hotels are checking and they said, if you do come, you risk the fine of getting caught by police. Um, so please be careful. Um, I'd hate for people in our church to get caught trying to do something, you know. Uh, police are going to be more strenuous than ever checking. Um, I'm sure they'll be patrolling every neighborhood, whatever it may be. Um, so if we could all work together, that would be so great, not just for us, but for everyone in our city. I mean, it, it takes more than one person to fix something and let's work together, be wise. Um, spend time with who values most in your home. Um, if not, Skype, talk to someone, be in a relationship, do something you wouldn't normally do and just worship, fast, whatever it may be. Um, be in tune in the Holy Spirit and, and I know we'll have a great weekend. So maybe I can do something different and Skype you? Yeah. yeah. Okay, there you go. Sure. So, uh, you know, we were supposed to take Zion to that dinosaur <laughs> show last week, you know, and he was not well. So... Your you mother and I Monday. drove to Rabina to rebook it because they have the number and we rebooked it for guess when? Monday. Next Monday. Now we're not allowed to leave. So well, you got till 6 p.m. tonight. So, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. So I, I can't believe it. It's, it's like last time, but praise God. Well, thank you, Josiah, for joining no us. Worries. And uh, we're going to bring Danny on the set right now. And uh, Josiah is doing a great job. We have a great team that's doing just an incredible job here. Ed's in the background just taking care of things. And we have Jake, uh, who does all of our graphic areas, who's just filling in. Uh, working for us here on the equipment. So I appreciate that, Jake, very much. But, uh, you know, lots of great things, interesting things happening in the life of the church, and uh, we thank God for each and every one. Now, uh, I don't know if you've met Danny, but I think everybody knows Danny, but maybe you haven't from overseas. Danny O'Brien is a tremendous spiritual son of the Lord and uh, been with us. So uh, Danny is one of our pastors. Great to have you here with us today. Amen. Thank you for having me, Pastor Sean. So, Danny, uh, how long have you been born again now? I've been born again for 13 years. 13 years. I remember your twin. You have a twin. I have a twin brother, yes, Alan. So, and he's here today, actually. I saw yeah, him walking he around. popped in today, yeah. So um, today is Friday. Friday, yeah. So we're not being naughty during the things. Let me, <laughs> we're recording this for Sunday, Sunday night. night. So the story went something like this. Alan came to church, made a decision for the Lord. I think I led him to the Lord or something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then... He went back and shared to you, you need to go to this church to get right. Yeah, Yes, two years before I got saved, he had told me I was going through a rough patch and uh, with the drugs and alcohol, and he said, you need to get yourself up to the church across from the Hyperdome. And uh, I let it sit for a couple of days, and I had a bad weekend. And uh, on the Monday, I went to another church and knocked on the door. No one answered. Uh, over at Highway just to get some help. And then on the next Sunday, I decided to come to church and I got saved. Yes, the Holy Spirit done amazing things and he just lifted my hand. I didn't even know my hand went up. And uh, and the amazing thing was, may I say, that you got saved and then your twin, who brought you in, went back out into the world. He's yeah, saved now, yeah, but he went yeah, back he, out he went back, for yeah. several years. He was always, yeah, always back and forth. 
the church, yeah, Alan, yeah, he's been saved a few times, brought yep. him, yeah. Now, you have four sons. With four Melissa, sons, yep. And uh, your oldest, Jake, is, no, second oldest. Jake. He's the Old, oldest. Oldest, Jake. Jake's is, the oldest. Is uh, doing the switch for us right now. Yes. Yes. So how old is Jake? Jake's 20. <laughs> so he's saved, single, sanctified. Yes, he Do I is. say satisfied or do I say he's a good-looking <laughs> young fella? Yeah, he works in the ministry. Uh, yes, and then we right. have Cooper. We have Cooper. How old is Cooper? Cooper is 17, turning 18. 18, but he's not available. But He's, he's saved. 18, sorry. 18. Forgive me. Yeah, he will not be happy now. You're just yes. 17. So, but his brother, Jake, doesn't care. He just has <laughs> no, a laugh, no. and, uh, which is good. Then we have Jack. Then we have Jack. Jack is 16, turning 17. 16, turning 17, which is great. Yes. And then Jake's we have the, the, yes. the youngest, Caleb. And Caleb is? Caleb is... <laughs> 11. <laughs> 11. I, I, could, I could see Plus behind the scenes, you can't see it, but I could see Jake is showing fingers or something. So, yeah, he's, 11. so he's 11. Yep. And Melissa is, no, we're not talking about Asia. <laughs> so it uh, comes in. So, wow, how, how much difference did it make getting born again and raising four sons? Yeah, it's, a, it's been amazing. It's been a complete change of life, um, adapting to the Christian life as well. And and just and just being a father, I mean, I mean for me, um, was being there for my kids, but, uh, being a father, a father that I didn't have. So um, being in the church, uh, being under minister, under pastor, under our pastor, um, really showed me how to be a man, how to be a father, and how to guide them and direct them. Yeah, and you know? and you know that's that's the whole thing about mentoring and discipleship, isn't it, Danny? Yeah. I mean, like you know, I am so very proud of you, and uh, and how you stand for God, and we're excited because in this new year of twenty twenty one, you are now full time on staff. You've been part time, yeah, yeah, but you're now full time yeah. on staff, and it's I'm been so excited. Six years part time, uh, five years, sorry, part time, and before then, obviously, just serving, serving. in the Lord, and mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, and and you know, sometimes people uh, get what's the word impatient or yeah. frustrated like i feel like i've been overlooked or this yep. doesn't happen but you really got to be patient let go because yeah. this is not normal employment this is no. going to be the call yeah and it, it can be tough it is it is it is and and pastor sean and, and it is it's serving the lord you got to keep your eyes fixed on him and it's and when it becomes i don't i've always said this to melissa and pastor sean you know yourself as i've always said i never want this just to be a job yes it's got to be serving the lord you know doing what god has done for me you know, he's helped me. He's got me through. He got me uh, sober. He got me all these things. You know, he's he's re- I lost everything. I once lost. He restored everything. Yeah. You know, and I really I'm really thankful to God for what He's done in our lives. And you really did lose everything. Yes, I, I did. Mean, I mean, you didn't yep. lose your marriage, thank yep. God, but it was yep. close, wasn't oh, it? Oh yeah, because yep. of the addictions. Yep. yep. Uh, I mean, like I remember stories where you said that you're a militia in the car next, but the police are all turning yep. up and uh, yeah to. I don't know. So rest me, yeah. Rest you, do yeah. whatever else. So I, I couldn't imagine the amount of um, pressure. I, I love the story you said, if, if, if you feel comfortable, yeah, no, about no. how, was it to Jake or, or that being your oldest? About forgiveness? Yeah, about forgiveness. Would yes. you mind? I don't yes. try to put no, Jake no, no, in a comfortable that, place no, or it you. A, it but was, it was a powerful story. It was. Yes, it was. I was. I was uh, this is the stage uh, new as a Christian the first year. Um, I, I did the mentoring program, the G-Men program. And as I'm doing the G-Men program, I think it was the second year of the G-Men program, um, the, the books really spoke to me where um, I have to, I, for my kids to forgive me. And so I sat my boy down. I was at the desk and I was working. I sat my boy down. I said, son, I said, I want you in God's timing to be able to forgive me for what you've seen. Uh, you know, the abuse, the drugs and alcohol and all these areas. And I said, but... I said, don't go away tomorrow and tell me that you forgive me. I said, pray about it, seek God, and then come to me. And, and you know, when, when it's God, you can fig- ask God to forgive me. And three months later, I was sitting at the computer in the office um, helping Melissa. By this time, I was out of construction. I was helping Melissa out with the books. And I'm at the desk, and I'm working away and my boy he was only little back then I mean he was he's 20 now and he's <laughs> back then he was, I think he was only like 13 or 12 or something like that he come up to me tapped me on the shoulder and he said dad he said can I talk to you and I said yes son anytime he said dad I forgive you and I turned I looked at him and it was just out of the blue three months later and it really and and it really I, I just I just broke I broke down crying I gave him a hug and I said thank you son thank you and ever since then there's been a weight off him 
off his shoulders and he's just been going forward in the Lord and just been seeking God and finding his identity in God. So I want to encourage men out there, if, if you've come from a life where I come from, um, encourage you uh, to speak to your children, but ask them, when you ask them, ask them to do it in the Lord because they can always, they can easily do it and the next day just to please dad and ask, you know, but it's got to be in God. So that was that, was that testimony. And, and, you know, and that's such a big thing because, you know, being a Christian is not just about you. It's about how you father and how yes. you do the area. And we always say, Danny, that the first priority is you and the Lord. Yeah. Second priority is you and your spouse. And the reason why I say spouse is because yes. one day the kids grow and leave. So you've got to have yeah, uh, right. a, a, a marriage before and after. And then comes the children. Yes. And Amen. you've you've got to spend time. And you never stop being a father. Yeah, no. Always balance it. Always, Always balance, balance it, which is so yeah. very important. And that's really a theme in our church. Yes, it is. Is that we've got to go. And now I see that God's blessed you. And, you, know, you have your business. Yep. Uh, you have um, a home. Yes. And you have so many things being restored yes. to you. What, what the locust took, God is yes. restoring. And yes. and you never sought the home. You never sought the no. business. But these things have just happened. Yes. Uh, because you honored God, which to me is just incredible now yeah. uh, as a pastor on the team you yeah. look after several areas yeah. Yeah. and it's because you've just proved such value yeah so it would relate everywhere to overseeing our cafe uh a young adult has never been bigger or stronger than it has been right now with you and melissa leading uh and at the same time we have an in, an interesting ministry uh of all of this food yeah. that we get I in think this time of pandemic yes exactly it come yeah. up in this so time. how many pallets do we seem to get a month pallet. so i think i'm we're getting more this week so uh we're getting more we're gonna beat 12 pallets a month so um that's this week so coles is really busy now this is happening coles is going to be more busy <laughs> so we got to be on standby so i'm picking some more up on monday i, I i'm allowed to because it's uh, consensus, essential, so I'm essential. allowed to, yeah, through Coles. And we make this available in the body of Christ, yes. and the sort of foods that we have are... Or are, pantry items, yeah. Or pantry, like, which would be like pasta, yep. sauces, uh, beans, vegetables, all that yeah. sort of non-perishable food. Yes, non-perishable. Uh, in fact, even right now, being Friday... Yeah. Uh, where you've got a team out there just making right that now, available yes, um, yes. and helping people out with food. And and that wasn't something that happened because I think, uh, it, uh, to me, yep. and if I'm wrong, correct me, yep. it came about more to do with a burden you had to reach out yes, to people. Yes, three years ago, yes, yes. So it would have been about three years ago you said to me, hey, I just – want to go out on the street That's at right, Christmas yes, yes. and just bless people. Yes. Just bless and uh, it's like, just pray for us. And I think yeah. that first time you just did your own resources yeah. and did like 10 hampers or yeah. something. I did 30. I took out 30 hampers the first time. Is that right? When the Lord spoke to me, it was like, I said, God, why? Like I said, you want me to do this? And, and uh, so – the Lord put on my heart, he said this, he said, I want you to go out, I don't want you to advertise, I don't want you to do anything, I just want you to bless people, bless the unsaved, and show them to leave something on their heart that Christians ain't bad people, they love. Mm -hmm. And that was why we did it. And we did start off with 30, the next year I think we had a goal of 100, and that next year God said through another uh, guy speaking a word over me, he said, you won't need finances, you won't need to worry about finances, I'm setting you up for ministry, Da da da. Anyway, your sister in the church, <laughs> God bless her. Thank thank you that she was obedient to the Lord, and she knew someone that worked her uh, close member that worked in Coles. And we went to go see about getting a couple of hampers. Well, we went out there to pick up some hampers, and we thought it was going to be you know just some bags of food. And we went out there, and it was actually free pellets of food. So we were. It was a blessing how the Lord brought that about. And that was all because we just was obedient and we stepped out in faith and we worked it like that. And God's just brought an overflow of it. It's providing for the uh, church. It's providing for the community mm. and so forth. It's just going further. It's opened so many doors. Well, I mean, it's opened so much. It was what was supposed to be once a once a month, then yeah. it's once a week. Now it's several times yeah, a week. Yes. And, and yeah. we're even talking about opening up something more permanently yes, going in the area. Yeah. And it's not taking away from other places, no, but it's no. just meeting a need and seeing it. So yeah. it's just so evolved. And I love the way that the young adults in full force just seem to want to be involved reaching out and doing reaching things. Out, and yeah. if there are people listening to us right now who are in dire straits, uh, they can contact the church and yes, we're here to help so. them yes. uh, in these areas because we just want to make sure they're blessed yes, and taken care of. Been, yes. But it's, it's great. You have a great team, yes. a, a great family. And uh, Danny, I'm so looking forward to this year working together yes. uh, with you 
And uh, I've seen God just do so much in your life. And I just know uh, this year is going to be great. We yes. work together as a team. It's a, it's a new team. We yes, have. it is. Yes, it's a and, bigger uh, and better year this year. So I'm excited. I mean, I'm excited even from from when we the pandemic hit and we we shut down. We had to do live streaming. How God blessed our church. Mm. Just how how everyone stood together and how the young adults came together and when they were allowed to fellowship they came out they fellowship they supported each other and and that that's really stood out for me from last year but i know god's got bigger plans this year he's prepared us for this year 2021 i know god's going to do amazing things amen so so normally on a sunday night we take up an offering yeah okay that's the normal procedure that we do and uh and I know I'm giving, yep. uh, as I would I per mean, normal. Yeah. And let me just ask in this time that if you would give as you normally would to the church, if you're not a part of our church, uh, obviously we're not asking you to do that, but if you want to sow a seed, that's wonderful. A lot of people get hung up about giving, Danny. Yes. They now, do, yeah. you've come t- from a place of poverty. Yeah. I mean, you 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 have indigenous blood. Yep. Okay, yep. even though you last time I saw yes. Brian says yes. I actually have indigenous blood. Yep. You actually grew up on a yes, indigenous lived, yeah, Aboriginal be, reservation for yes, a little bit? Yes, I did. Yes, I lived on an Aboriginal reservation for four years, yes. Yeah. And you experienced some tough times because yes, your skin wasn't times. dark enough. Yes. You were yes, that, attacked by those yes. who were darker. Yep. And then you probably attacked by other European based Australians yes. who thought you were indigenous. Yes. I mean that's like right. y- y- you were being hit on both ends. Yes. <laughs> how, how how much poverty or hardship did you see uh, living on that reservation? Yeah, being there. out too, it was, uh, out, it was uh, half an hour out from Echuca, uh, Mauema, down on the Victorian New South Wales border. And uh, so we were about 40 minutes away from a, a, a town. So it's out there. It was a lot of poverty. It was people living off the government, off the pension and whatever. And so every fortnight... Uh, people would get paid, but in them weeks when it wasn't payday, it was the other weeks. There's a lot of alcohol abuse out there. There's a lot of drug abuse out there, um, and different things. A lot of violence. So I've seen a lot of that stuff down there. So, so when you hear about us, like even right now, and there'll be a thing that pops up if they want to give on yes. the screen. If you hear about us now saying, you know, help us as a church in the yeah. areas which we do, because we still got to run staff, we still got to yes, wages right. and it costs. How does that affect you? Do, do you react towards giving or do you, I mean, how do you feel on yourself? Honestly, how do you feel? How I get, when, me give, for me, when I came to the Lord, um, I, uh, giving for me was giving back to Jesus for just even me come to, as he died for us on the cross. So for me, giving was, was easy. Believe it or not, it was easier than Melissa. She come from a good side of a home. So a lot of people, when I first come to Christ, a lot of other Christians thought Melissa was the giver. It wasn't so. It was me always wow. giving. And you will find, and I find even now as a pastor, I know people that I'm dear to, that I'm close to in the church, that do it hard and do it strong. And I know how you step out and how you give. And I just want to thank you, even as a pastor here that's on the team, and thank you for stepping out in faith because it's about that. Um, for me, it was about a revelation that I had, um, just thanking him how, how he just changed, thanking God that I can come to a church and serve in the church. And that's all I did when I came to church was just serving in the cafe, taking the rubbish out, doing all that. So giving to me it was just a change of life. I wanted that change of lifestyle. So it was, I was motivated from I didn't want to go back. I didn't want to go back to that. So giving to me was about the newness of life, the new things that I'm doing. So that was how I started to give. Well, let's just pray, pause yeah. a minute and pray over the giving right now. So yeah. Father, even as Pastor Danny shared, we thank you for the generosity. We thank you for those yes, you. Uh, who have the the church at heart and they're sowing right now. There are regular givers. There might even be people who are watching right now who want to sow a seed, but not to give us your church tithes, but they want to sow a seed. So Lord, just bless them. During this time, bless them, and just let there be a peace over them, I pray. Amen. Thank you so much for your giving. You know, Danny, I I remember talking to people in America because, you know, they have tips at their restaurants compared to us. And I did ask a couple times, who's your best tippers? And they said, well, on average, it's actually the poor people. Yeah. Because they understand how hard that is. How hard. Whereas those who are middle class and up, they're more tight. Yes. 
And uh, so I've just thought that's what you said. Yeah. Because yeah. you had hardship, you found yeah. it easier to give. Yeah. Versus others who found, you know, more yeah. middle class upper yeah. uh, harder. That there's an interesting story. Yes. All right, well, Pastor Danny, thank you so much Amen. for joining thank us right now. Me. And we're gonna have Ed come back on. So the Lord bless you, my friend. And uh, great news, great things happening. Now just uh, as Ed's coming on, just uh, updating from the Courier Mail on the COVID lockdown, what we need to know, which uh, has the effect uh, from Friday. So it might be old news, but I'll just share it anyhow as it's coming in. So uh, the Premier announced the Greater Brisbane area will go into a three day lockdown, which was 6 o'clock Friday to 6 o'clock Monday. And I, I don't know if this has been updated, so I'm sharing here, so I'm just telling you. It came about because there was a ho- hotel cleaner tested positive to the highly contagious UK strain of coronavirus. Uh, so that was at one of those areas where people who flew in were kept in the area. The lockdown covers the Brisbane, Logan, Ipswich, Redlands and Morton areas. And as I mentioned, it began 6pm Friday until 6pm Monday. Two visitors will be permitted to visit homes during this period of time. Essential work will be allowed, but people are being urged to work from home. People can leave if providing support for vulnerable people. Exercising in the local neighbourhood is okay and shopping locally. So uh, what that means to me, uh, Ed, is that I can still go out at 3.30 in the morning for the dog for a bit of a walk around this where I am. <laughs> yeah. It says uh, hairdressers, nail saloons, and gyms will be off limits. Mm. Well, I don't know if you're into the hairdressers and nail saloons. I'm not. Uh, but the gym is close to me. I have to cancel my Monday appointment. Is it nails or hair? Nails. Okay. And uh, community sport has also been placed on hold. Uh, mask when leaving home will be mandated during the lockdown period. A child under 12 does not need to wear masks. And I, I like that idea, under 12. I remember we had the uh, special event. Do you remember we had the special event here with the um, Carol Spectacular? Oh, yes, Carol's, yes. And uh, you just had to show grace to two- and three-year-olds who would not wear masks. Yes, yes. And it's not asking to do that one. Funerals will be limited to 20 people. Mm. Weddings to 10. Could you imagine, Ed, and of course this doesn't affect us, because could you imagine you've been planning a wedding yeah, for and years. it's on this weekend? Yeah. <laughs> Well, it might not be years, but it might be for advice. Yeah. And it's this weekend. All of a sudden, the wedding is down to 10 people. Down to people. And it's not just yep. saying, oh, well, I live on the Sunshine Coast. I live on the Gold Coast. If you have been in the Greater Brisbane area at all, you are in the lockdown as well. So yeah. Harry, because yeah. we said, Harry, do you mind coming and helping us out this morning? He says, yeah, the damage is already done. I go, what do you mean? He says, well, I was already up in the Brisbane area yesterday, mm. so I'm already restricted. He can't yeah. do his church. Uh. So he said people would face fines of Two hundred dollars if they fail to wear a mask. Yeah. Well, at home during lockdown, the Sunshine Coast and Gold Coast have been included in the lockdown because the clean out. Oh, it says the Sunshine and Gold Coast are, have not been included in lockdown because the cleaner had not ventured outside the Greater Brisbane region. Ah, uh, yeah. But but like Harry said, that because he visited, he visited, he can't do it. Yeah. So anyone who has visited Brisbane, here we go, since January the second. So today is the uh, um, the sixth. No. Eighth. Eighth. I was close. So, but <laughs> on the Sunday, it's yeah. the 10th. Yeah. But anyone who's visited Brisbane since January the 2nd has now moved on to other parts of the state or country, which is also required to quarantine for the next three days. I mean, isn't the cat already out of the bag? I yeah, we're know. stuffed. It's, it's spread it all over the country. We're doomed. Uh, okay. Stop planning the funerals. She, get she the warned wheels. that there was $1,300 fines for those who break the rules. Yeah. Now, I know there'll be people in the United States, England, who are laughing at us mm. because... There is no other cases. It's all lockdown. I mean, like, if I look at the Queensland cases right now, and I'm just trying to get an area there right now, uh, and I've got it on here, Queensland Health, um, uh, some of the essentials, exercise, now let's go to the Premier's page. And let's have a look here, the Premier's page and uh, on Facebook. And this is 24. Six minutes ago on Friday, uh, it says for the next three days, ask the people to stay. If you need to leave your home, mass and mandatory. If we don't do this now, it'll end up being a 30 day lockdown. Well, we, we don't want that. If you don't have 30 days, geez. <laughs> well, two hours ago, uh, when it gave these statistics, yes, it says that um, there's zero local cases as of two hours ago, so zero local cases in the whole of our state. Yep but nine other sources. And nine other sources means travellers who've come back who are in quarantine. Yeah. So yep. it means they're not outside. Not outside, yeah. 
active cases are 23, but that's within that quarantine. So yep. when, when I, if I share this to American friends, yep. they're laughing at me. You know, they're absolutely laughing at me. And they're wondering, what are we doing? You know, we're like we're missing it. And they've got to be laughing at us, Ed. Yeah, they have to be. Coming, because it just doesn't work. So look at that on screen. On the screen, yeah. So it says nine, oh, so this is an update. So it's nine cases today. Yep. But they're today not. Friday, Friday we're talking about. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Nine cases Friday. Sorry. Yes, thank you for correcting <laughs> that. And it's, but those people aren't local. Yeah, they're not local. Because okay, it says here that they have, meaning they're within confinement. So yeah. they're not local. They're locked up in quarantine. So they came off the plane and got locked in. But how this cleaner got infected was she works at that place. Yeah. It's the cleaner. <laughs> yeah, but Classic. I mean, like, they need to work out something else. Why Better not system. just hire those who are incarcerated to clean? Yeah, clean up your own mess. <laughs> <laughs> give them something to do. Yeah, give them something to do. <laughs> we'll give you free accommodation. Yeah, free accommodation. You're just going to clean. I think it says like there's $13 million outstanding on accommodation fees. Oh, my goodness. That been done. Jeez. So uh, yeah, that, that's, um, it's pretty, pretty crazy. Yes. Pretty crazy, my friend. Very crazy, but you know God's in control. God's what do we do, Ed? Control. What do we do? Pray. So you know, Ed, uh, I've only got a few minutes left, and this yes. is a Sunday night special. Yes. You know, I can't help myself. Are we going to talk about Civil War Two? Dun 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 dun. Hey, I I was I was in total shock. Yeah, uh, me too. <laughs> you know, I I was just saying. I mean, first of all, uh, the conservatives. Yep, a Republican. The GOP. Yep, lost the uh, two, Georgia. Georgia yeah, right? lost Georgia yep. two seats. Two seats. Lord yeah. Lord. So that makes it fifty-fifty oh. with the casting vote being uh, vice president, Pres- vice president, president, who is Kamala Harris. Yeah. So that's not going to go now. Now, and some things they can't do because they need a majority sixty percent. Yeah. Yeah. But for doing new taxes, and everything else, it comes about in that area so there'll be that change coming in yes so i can't believe the so (laughs) in this final time of president trump three things have happened ed yes one he lost the election lost the election now i I, i'm gonna admit to you i thought he would win yeah me too now i never said that says the lord as some (laughs) naughty people did okay but i actually thought he's gonna win yeah me too i thought so too uh number two okay uh they have lost the Senate. The Senate, yep. Okay. Well, maybe there's only three things to mention. Okay. He lost the election. Yep. He lost the Senate. Yep. All right. Which means it's going to be tough. Yes. Now, in two years' time, I think, is they do another they do portion, a, of the yeah, Senate, portion of the so Senate. portion of the Senate, yep. there. So I can understand the fear and the concern. And then uh, when they did this thing in um, Washington, D.C., to officiate whether or not – comes in there was a lot of pressure on vice president pence to somehow veto or stop yeah and there's a lot of conservatives who are angry i think well i don't know how true everything is but even the president is angry at pence yeah yeah because he didn't do it but he's got to follow the law the law yes and love it or hate it on the 20th just two weeks less than two weeks yeah they will swear in Biden as president with Kamala Harris. So it's coming. So that's the way it is. That's the way it is. And I know it's a lot of fear. And I don't know if you're listening to any reports today, but they were saying, oh, the riots were uh, just infiltrators. And and I'm sure there probably were some infiltrators. Yes, yes, yes. But there were also people got caught up. Just got caught up in it, didn't know what was happening, just kept following the crowd. And I do believe it's damaged President Trump. Yep. Yep. Uh, It has. I mean, I don't think... um I don't think if if he ran again in 2024. Oh no way! They they he'd probably they'd probably prison him. They, I bet these next two years, the first half of Biden presidency, will be them trying like let's get Trump in prison. Well, yeah, they, I, they they'll put that in the front I conspiracy theory time. They'll put that as the front news while they're doing dodgy stuff in the background. Go to media, they report on Trump getting Trump in prison, or they're like legalizing. I don't know. Post post late term abortion, abortions or something like that. I they thought President stuff. President-elect Joe Biden said he wasn't going to pursue any of that stuff there. But uh, yeah, well, who, they can say knows? a lot of things. Yeah. Well, who you're knows? right because they have the floor. Exactly. They, they, they control like all three parts of government now, right? Yeah. Lower, upper presidency. When Nancy Pelosi was going off 
off again just oh, yeah. to, to, with everybody. <laughs> and I think as Lindsey Graham says, can we just settle down yeah, now? Yeah, just chill out. Can we just <laughs> stop the rhetoric? Yeah. You know, can we just it, – it can't be helping. Yeah. But why are so many Australians involved? Involved, right? I mean, like I hear – like I heard one laddie I like very much. She's in Victoria. Yeah. But she hates Trump. Oh, you know, my god. Put goodness. him in jail. And I'm like, why do you he, – he, he's not – in this, we're not America. Yeah, like he can't affect this country unless he sends the military to invade us or well, something. Well, indirectly. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> with China, we, um, we know that Trump supports in China, so yeah. I hope Biden does. Yeah. But the fact of the matter is, is why are so many Australians involved in, cons- in the conspiracy I things? I like, they like, they we're, think we're in pinging. Australia. This is yeah. not our government. Yeah, exactly. They can't control us. I mean, I've never heard of a time when Australia got so caught up in American politics. It is not our nation we are australian oh uh, well some people will say it's because our politics is really boring well it is yeah <laughs> it is america politics is like tv watching well, like, well the president's a tv star <laughs> well, tv I mean, star a book author a, uh, a multi-million dollar person billionaire millionaire do multiple businesses both successful and failures but then like who's our current prime minister Oh yeah, he was the uh, ex uh, ex technology. Uh, John co- Howard. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Who is who's? Our- so, so how do you? I mean, yeah. how many conspiracy theories are there out there? Like when this pandemic oh, where do, started, where do you want to start? <laughs> it was all about the end of the world. Yep. Now, I mean, what are some of the conspiracy things you've heard right now? Do we want to start with like just a real simple conspiracy theory that's probably yep. like true? All right. Here's a basic conspiracy theory: women's jeans pockets are made smaller on purpose so they have to carry handbags. So they can't just put a wallet in no, there. No, hang on, hang on a minute. That, I, I, I think we're off. No, no, no. What's we're, we're got talking, to do with no, no, we're talking the American about like, election coronavirus? No, no, you said, mentioned conspiracy theories. Yeah, but I was, I, was, I, was relating, I was relating it towards oh, okay. where we're at. Oh, okay. Hello, let's can you go. please come back? All right, all right, okay. Well, uh, let's. what's a major conspiracy theory? Um, I heard one was coronavirus. It's all is, fake. <laughs> yeah, to get rid of Donald Trump. Yeah, just to get into the... I haven't actually heard that one. I've just mm. heard that they've they used the mail-in ballots to bring in a bunch of fake voters to steal the election. That's the main conspiracy theory. Well, I don't want to go there because it's too close to some of my friends over there who got... No, who, who actually do, believe that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh. Well, well, what I, happens... But, look, do I believe that there is... Some dodgy corrupt, corruption. Dodgy. Yeah, of course I do. I think everywhere. every election yeah. does here. Yeah. <laughs> but do I think it's enough to change yourself? Well, I, well, well, Josiah says to me, yeah. I should just leave room and there's a truth and everything else. Yeah. Yeah. But <laughs> well, let, let's. But I, I actually, yeah. I actually think, yes, love it or hate it, Biden won, won the fairly? election. Yeah, I think, I think he and won fairly. Just the amount of people who are so angry mm. at. Trump in the area. Yes. And I think, you know, it, how do I say this politely? He, some of, a lot of the stuff he's caused for himself. Yes. Because of the aggression. Yes. And I, if, if Trump wanted to run again, I don't think he would have Pence as his running mate. Yeah, no way. <laughs> I personally, even if, even if Trump uh, won pre selection with the Republicans, yes. I don't believe he would win the next election because there's so much hate for him. Yeah, so much hate, yep. They'd be better off with someone like Pence. Oh, yeah, who yeah. Who seem a bit more... Because he, he won points yeah, yeah. on how he handled himself. Yes. No, not with some probably some people here, but he won points of how... He called up the security because the president didn't bring order. Yeah, didn't bring order, yeah. And the areas there. And he actually officiated over recognising yes. President Lake Biden. So, yep. you know, I just... My heart breaks. Like, I've got Australians... Yep. Day, who's sending me all this rubbish mm. about American politics? And I'm like, why are you getting caught up? Yeah, they why, kinda, yeah it doesn't affect. Why us. are you getting caught up? Yeah. And I'm like, you're an Australian, mate. Yeah, you know, let, let America deal with its own laundry, <laughs> own trash file. <laughs> we don't need to look. I love America. We pray for them, and I care about my friends there. Yes, but we are not America. We are Australia. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Uh, I think we got enough stuff to deal with in our own place yes, yes. Uh, rather than trying to take on the burden like what are we supposed to do uh, uh, change the election out there so yeah. it comes in but it does break my heart about how many Christians are so caught up it's almost you know Jesus Jesus said to Pilate you know basically and I'm paraphrasing if this kingdom was worth fighting for this world then my people would fight but they don't because we know we're of a kingdom to come so yeah. you know Jesus didn't get out there 
with the Roman authorities and say, grab your swords, you put your sword away. And yet I see Christians out there, so-called, like in the name of God, wanting to do war in this area, and it's not doing anything for their witness. Yes. And uh, it's just terrible. And you remember, America's greatest loss in war out of all the wars was their civil war. Yeah, yeah, it was. Over 600,000 yeah. died, yep. and that's Americans. Yes. And this, you put all the other wars together, that still makes the highest death. Yep. And here again, we see the United States of America under such attack. See, people say that Australians are more compliant, mm. like with the rules, we're more compliant. Yeah. Whereas I wonder if it has to do with the origins of America's birth of the revolution. Yeah, yeah. Where they become more defiant on the areas. Yeah, now would un, like unironically be the time where a civil war would break out because no. there's so much defiance. There, there's so much defiance. Yeah. You saw what happened with the White House, man. That was insane. no, that wasn't the White House. No, it was the White House. They went to the White House and there was they were in like Nancy Pelosi's office. That's not the White House. Yeah, the White was- House is where the president lives. Oh, okay. Well, the the the. The place where the, the capital, the capital, they were in the mm. capital building. That was mm. crazy. The people's building, it's called. Yeah. So the people on the back, and you know, so so the fact that the president, the White House, is protected. I've been there, not in it. Oh, been there. okay. And right. Capitol Hill is further away. Ah, you you okay. know, it's a bit of a walk, further away. Yeah. So they're not side by side. Ah. Okay. So uh, it comes to different areas. So there's there's a lot of things there, but it breaks my heart because. You know, there's just people and, you know, just my friends who's just so caught up mm. in it, which yes. I just think is so divisive. And we've got to reach out to people and we can't do it by getting caught up. And mm. we've got to put our hope in God and, and find peace in God because yes. that that's what's so important. Yes, you know, exactly. it's got to be so important. I like this area here and a statement says this, who we listen to and believe will determine whether we lay down and rest in trust or we stand in fear. Uh, Denise was saying this the other week. But who we listen to and believe will determine whether we lay down and rest in trust or we stand in fear. And I would encourage everybody, Australians and who else, that be careful of who you're listening to. Yeah, exactly. Because who you listen to determines if you're going to find rest or you're going to find fear. Yes. Well, uh, Ed, it's always good sharing with you. And uh, we've had a week or so too off because you were busy. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, this is a special podcast we're doing for Sunday night. And uh, we just want to encourage everybody out there, don't allow fear to take your heart. Exactly. Uh, Sandra and I are here for you as all the team. And if you need us, just communicate. We're with us. Yes. Uh, as of us recording this on Friday, yep. uh, we have the belief it finishes Monday at 6. Yep. Uh, if it doesn't, we'll be sharing and, and interacting with you. Yes, church won't stop because of what's happening or what, what might happen. It and, won't stop. And Sandra and I as a team won't stop loving you and yep. being here for you. So we are here for you. Don't be scared to reach out. We're here. Yes. Did you know that this is uh, 44 weeks that we've been doing church since the last coronavirus? Yeah, So yeah. now I'm going to have to start week one again. Oh, start it. Because of the break that came in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, 44 weeks straight, 44 Sundays we have done. Mm. Straight. Are we going to get some morning streams again with you and now, Sandra? Now <laughs> I'm going to have to go to week one. Yeah. And start the count start again. Start the count again. Because every week I put a marker down on my area. Ah, comes in there. Yes. If you don't know the Lord or you're away from the Lord, I want to encourage you to know and find Christ as your Savior. There's no greater love than this, that a man lay down his life for his friend. And Jesus calls you friend. Whether you know him or don't know him, God loves you and he wants you to know him in a very personal way. If you're overcome with fear right now, anxiety, if your mind is running astray right now with thoughts, the areas, then I want to speak God's peace over you. Don't get caught up by what media is demanding. Don't get caught up by Christians who think they mean well, but it's not doing well by what they send you. But spend time in the Word and know his peace. Father, I pray for those who are watching right now, those who don't know you, that in this moment they'd make a decision to come back to you. Did you just say this prayer? Say, Jesus, come into my heart, into my life. Forgive me of all my sins. I confess with my mouth. I now believe in my heart that Jesus is my Savior and Lord. I repent. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, then please let us know so I can contact you. And whoever is out there and you're feeling anxious, if you're feeling uncertain, Just rest in God's peace. This is not the end of the world. 
we will get through this. The majority of the world is doing it so much harder than we are. We're talking about one person who's a cleaner. We have no local cases, but everything is is, is in regards to the hotel areas. Mm. Now, this may have changed by the time this is broadcast, but no matter what, we will get through this. Mm. Do not lose hope. Do not lose your faith. And remember, we are here for you. If you need to talk to me, Pastor Sandra, or any of the team, we are here for you. We love you. We pray God's peace and grace and favor over you. Rest in his grace. I look forward to seeing you next Sunday at church. God bless you, and thank you for joining us.